represents a man who is a true legend in the sport of professional wrestling, the Sidebuster, Kenny J. I'm uh, Sidebuster Kenny J, and I've been there Sidebuster for many, many years. As everybody knows, I've uh, been a professional wrestler for 30 some odd years. Okay. My business. And I've also been in the landscaping business for a while, and now we're in the lawn maintenance. And then Wally Carbo, he actually gave me the name Sodbuster, and it, uh, it's just stuck with me for years and years, and, I, and right now I'm, uh, I'm really I'm just known as the Sodbuster. We don't we ain't doing much uh, laying sod no more, but uh, I still carry the name. <laughs> We have been married 32 wonderful years. <laughs> when people ask what does your husband do for a living, I always said he owns his own business and he is a professional wrestler. And it's always, well, what is his name? And I say, Kenny Sodbuster J. Kenny, has, he's kind of done a Vern Gagne, you know, he's retired and unretired about 47 times, and uh, Kenny's still got in his blood, and the amazing thing about Kenny J, he probably looks better now than he did 10 years ago, and I don't know what it is, there's a fountain of youth somewhere. Uh, well, I actually started wrestling in Milwaukee, I went to a school, uh, it was a professional wrestling school, but you had to learn how to fall, how to land on your feet instead of your back, and you land on your back, you know, right away you can knock the wind out. I went to school for three months, and I was, I was kind of fed up with it, and I left, uh, came down to Minnesota, and I uh, joined a carnival. And that was really rough, because there we took on all comers, and anybody could come up and challenge us, you know. I would be up on, on like, a stage, and then he would ask, if there's anybody out there who would come up and challenge one of his boys, you know. So it doesn't be farmers, you know, or anybody. They come up and they'd say, uh, I want to take him on, and they'd point to me, you know. And if he didn't beat me in two minutes, then, uh, you know, he didn't get anything. How's it going? Good. I, I don't think I ever did get beat because, uh, you know, two minutes I can run around the ring for that long. <laughs> okay. I think one of the real big things when I was a kid watching wrestling was that we were still fighting a war with the Japanese and the Germans, but I should throw the Russians in there too. Professional wrestling was loaded with the all-American good guy getting into the ring with the bad guy Russian. But now you've got real diabolical characters. When I was a kid, it was he was just a hard-nosed athlete. I came up with the, the side grip. You get him in the, in, the, in the headlock kind of, but you grab him by the chin and you bring it up. And then I get the old thumb and go right underneath the chin. But it's a very tender spot. And as I lift it up, they just, I give, I give. The bad guy of yesterday might pick up a chair once in a while and hit his opponent with it. Today, they get the popcorn vendor on the way to the ring. And then, you'll have them going up into the seats, into the balconies. Uh, it's a lot more violent. It's a lot more uh, bizarre, certainly, than it was when I was growing up. Back then, it was, wrestlers were wrestlers. Those were guys, big dudes, you know. I mean, they were lumberjacks. They'd come right off the field, you know, right off the streets, you know. You know, even me, I was, I was a farmer up in Holdingford, Minnesota. And nowadays, you know, they're all real muscle-bound, you see them, you know. And it, they don't seem to do as much wrestling as they did back then. You know, now, I mean, you walk around with a two-by-four or something, you know. <laughs> In a match that could end up being one of the best grudge matches of the century, ladies and gentlemen, the student versus the teacher, the uncle versus the nephew, Kenny the Sod Buster J is here today, and he will be taking on the Brentwood Bad Boy, his nephew, J.B. Trask. I am J.B. Trask. I am the hottest wrestler not only in Northern Premier Wrestling, but in the world today. J.B. Trask is another another fellow. I mean, this is uh, this is a sick puppy. There's a great adrenaline rush when you walk through that curtain, and the people, whether they're booing you or cheering you, it's 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 a natural high, and that's what I love about it. Ring first. Kenny J is my uncle. Everybody in Minnesota knows who Sodbuster Kenny J is, and uh, I guess you could say he broke me into the business. 
He never liked my style of wrestling. He always said that I always took shortcuts. Some people say I cheat. I kind of look at it as doing whatever it takes to win. This is a very dangerous cat, and uh, I know he's got something going with Kenny J right now that's going to explode and erupt. He's, you know, he just he never appreciated anything I ever did, and it really bugged me. And he, he, he never even acknowledged that I was, I was his nephew. Kenny J uh, kept it very quiet from the wrestling public that he was the uncle of J.B. Trask, and I think primarily because he was ashamed of J.B., but that's neither here nor there. He does a different type of wrestling compared to me. I'm the clean, the, the hole for hole, the in and out of holes, and he just loves the hitting, the kicking, and the hair pulling. And Kenny was a great scientific wrestler, only broke the rules when he had to. JB, on the other hand, completely the opposite. I mean, he wouldn't know a rule book from a phone book. I got hurt. I hit my head against the ring post. And I felt really bad until I helped him in the dressing room. And Kenny openly exhibited his concern for JB, which kind of stunned everybody. We didn't know why in the world would Kenny J care about this guy. And then he came out, he thought I was seriously injured, and he starts spilling that I'm his nephew, and I never wanted it exposed. Okay, then JB come up there, and I thought, boy, this is going to be great. He's going to apologize. He's going to probably shake my hand and everything. He got exposed. I got upset. Just then, he gave me the goddamn clothesline. Boom. He clobbered his own uncle. I went through the floor. He kept kicking me and everything, and now we got a grudge match. Bah, we got a feud going. Kenny J is a, you know, he's, he's getting on in years, but he's an athlete, and he's a competitor, and even at his age, and even, I don't care who you are, if you go up and punch Kenny J, he's going to get up fighting. Nephew, niece, I, I don't care what he is, because we're going all out on this one. I mean, there's going to be uh, hitting, uh, kicking, and uh, eye gouging, and hair pulling. But I'm going to tell you one thing. I'm going to tell you who's coming right out on top on that one. And that's Sodbuster Kenny J. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Mick Beckman with Christian Danny. And this is the one everybody has been waiting for. Sodbuster Kenny J going in the ring against his very own nephew. Now entering the ring, the Brentwood Bad Boy. This is new generation coming up now and that's exactly what i am a new generation style of wrestler and i'm going to kick his butt today you've seen him for decades he is the uncle of this man in the ring and the teacher the legend the side buster this match is scheduled for one fall with a 60 minute time limit On this heart of mine, I keep my eyes wide open all the time. I keep the ends out for the tide to find. Because you're mine, I walk the line. family feuds on several occasions but we have never seen bad family blood like we are seeing here tonight between jb trask and the sodbuster kenny J. for 13 years nobody knew the relationship the last time out jb trask turned on his own uncle kenny said anytime any place i want this kid he's got him tonight this is a tough tough man he hasn't won a lot of matches but the matches he's won have been big ones. Oh, and he's put on the tables. Oh, he kicked a 60-yard field goal that time. Kenny J has been in control of this one almost from the onset here. Referee Eddie Sharkey hasn't had a lot to do, but ask JB if he wants to call it a night. Oh, look at Plumtree on the ring apron. Mortimer Plumtree, the bug on the windshield of pro wrestling, who at any given moment will stick his stinking nose in any man. For J.B. Trask, my goal right now is to make sure that at any cost, he gets rid of Kenny J. What a shock that is. What a stretch for Plumtree to hand Trask something. For an object. He nailed right in the throat of sidebuster Kenny J. 
The fans bringing up the chant of Cheetah, and you know something? That is music to the ears of J.B. Trent. You spin those punks, just keep it down right now. How many times in one night can this idiot interfere? We need another referee, or we need more of a punk tree out of this sport.